Welcome to another video. You know, I've been making a lot of videos about all kinds of equipment. But I figured I haven't made too much videos about actual objects in the sky. Why do we even buy these telescopes? On the right we have an 8 inch, on my left it's a 12 inch Dobsonian. Believe it or not, this is still not considered a huge telescope. It's kind of in the middle, there are even bigger ones. So why do we need these big telescopes? Today I'll use a really nice book, I highly recommend it, Nightwatch. It has a really nice overview of beginner targets. Just because these targets are great for beginners, it doesn't mean that once you have a big telescope, you cannot experience them in an even better light. To be honest, these targets look absolutely amazing in the 12 inch, and on many nights I come back to them and observe them for the 20th time. This is also true for many other experienced astronomers. Happy to say that already about 600 subscribers. You guys like the channel, I'm glad about it. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do so. There's a lot of fun videos coming on the way. Today I'll cover some great objects that you can see in the spring and summer sky. As you know, because of the way the, world, the Earth turns around the sun, some of these objects you can see only during certain seasons of the year. In another video, half a year later, we'll also cover some objects about that you can see for the winter and uh, autumn skies. So let's begin! One of the best objects that we will be ever able to see is this one. The so-called Whirlpool Galaxy M51. Just like the secret area in the USA M50, Area 51. <laughs> It's a relatively big galaxy, about 75,000 light years across, our Milky Way is 100,000 and its distance is about 21 million light years away, 23 maybe, maybe even 30. So when you're looking at it, you're looking at 23 million years old light. This is the great thing about visual observations with these uh, telescopes. You're actually looking at the original light from the galaxy and seeing the entire galaxy in a really, really nice way. We're going to be using some maps in the book because that's the best way to find stuff in the sky. You know, you can always just put a number uh, in your go-to tracker and it will automatically show you the object. But where's the fun in that? That's like ordering an all-inclusive vacation, just landing at the spot and just looking at uh, the hotel. What you would ideally want to do is do it the old-fashioned way. Get out there, maybe pick a pair of binoculars. With these you can find all the constellations. Learn where is which constellation. Once you know the constellations, you pick a basic map, like one of these books. And based on that, inside of that constellation, you can see which object, where it is and find it easily. In one of my next videos, I will be making a guide of how exactly to do that manually using a couple of uh, pieces of equipment that you can find for cheap on AliExpress. So you might want to subscribe and stay in touch. There are already 600 <laughs> subscribers. I'm really happy that you guys are liking the channel. So I'll keep making videos as time permits. You can see from the mess around here, life with kids can be tough. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure many other fathers agree, not too much time for astronomy. So if you look at this map, you can easily see M51. It's in the Ursus Major constellation, also called Big Dipper. And at the very end, if you go just a little bit below, you will be able to find it. Now the best way to do that is through Stellarium, through some uh, astronomy software. Just pick, uh, find where is the exact location of it. Point your telescope roughly in that way, help yourself with an altitude meter. Again, in our next video, we'll check on how to exactly do that and you will be able to find it easily. What you also want to do is read a little bit about these objects because looking in the telescope, all you see is just something like a smoke, something like a small fuzzy. So it really helps to understand what you're actually seeing, how far it is and how big it is. The next magnificent splendor that you can see is the galaxies M49 
and M82 Bodice Galaxy and Cigar Galaxy. These are also quite big. The Spiral M81 is about 150,000 light years across, so it's 50% higher than 50% uh, bigger than the Milky Way and it's about 12 million light years away so it will be quite bright even in a small 8 inch its partner M82 is uh, smaller around 65,000 light years across still pretty big one you will find this to the right of Ursus Major again we look at the map you can easily identify them based on the constellations nearby and again easily to find them now to be clear, you don't need such a big telescope to observe most of these objects. What I am recommending here is easily observable with an 8-inch and even smaller telescopes. To be honest, I used the 8-inch to observe the entire Messier catalog. It took me two years because of not enough time, but it's completely doable. In the 12-inch, of course, the same objects could be bigger, prettier, more resolution, brighter, so the bigger the telescope, the better in even these uh, very simple objects. What we are going to go next is in the Virgo constellation. Again, if you can, uh, again, if you look at the map, you can easily see these three uh, objects. It's one of my favorite views of the sky. It's called the Leo triplet. It's three galaxies at the same time. Quite, quite amazing. If you take an eyepiece like this one, that's a 2 inch 30 millimeter, even in the 12 inch you will be able to see all three galaxies at the same time. So it's quite amazing you're looking at three galaxies at the same time. It's M66, M65 and NGC3628. Quite amazing. One of them, M65, is 80,000 light years across. M66, it has a central dust lane, it's 150,000 light years across, so almost double the size of our Milky Way. And they're distant of about 35 million light years away, so quite, quite interesting. Completing the trio is irregular NGC 3628, more haughty collection of stars, about 30,000 uh, light years of diameter. Now I'm showing you some of these pictures. I try to my best uh, to show you how they actually look in the telescope. For some of these I'm also putting some photos, obviously you will not be able to see these uh, with your visual eye. This next one, it's very, very famous. It's in the Hercules constellation, it's called M13. It's the best, brightest, biggest globular, globular clusters in the sky. You can easily see it as a small patch even with these small binoculars. So if you don't have any telescope yet, anybody will recommend you a pair of binoculars to at least observe these basic objects. You will see it like a tiny speck that was a little bit of shiny like a small diamond. Of course, if you use the 12 inch to observe it, it's magnificent. It's full of stars, you're literally seeing hundreds of stars in a big spot, especially with 14 millimeter eyepiece. As you might realize, I'm using just a couple of eyepieces uh, to observe the night sky. I sold most of my eyepieces, check the previous video if you haven't, and kept just a couple of them. So M13, really magnificent and highly recommended. If we see, if you look at the map, it's very easy to see, no problem whatsoever. And what you're looking at M13, it's about 150 light years across, pretty big, and its distance is about 25,000 light years away. Next, we're going to check Nebula. It's one of my favorite ones, it's called the Swan Nebula. The first time I saw it, I knew it was the Swan Nebula because it actually looks like a swarm even in the small 8 inch. I was observing the nearby Lagoon Nebula, also very nice, and easily next to it I could very well find something that looked like a swarm and it was really the Swan Nebula. 
colorful nebula stretches about five light years across. So it's really interesting when you're looking at this, you're actually looking at five light years in front of you. And it's about 5,000 light years away. Again, we look at the map, it's very easy to see. Keep in mind, it's quite low on the horizon from the northern um, hemisphere. So it's visible only uh, during some times uh, in the spring and summer. Next, also very famous one, the Dumbbell Nebula. Dumbbell Nebula, this one is pretty big visually, but it's actually only 0.7 light years across at the widest point. It's just 3,000 to 4,000 light years old. 3,000 to 4,000 years old. That's nothing compared to the universe, which is like 18 billion uh, years old. It's very, very near, it's just 1,250 light years away, so it's really big in your view. And keep in mind when you're looking at it, it's just 0.7 light years across. So light will traverse that distance in less than a year. Really interesting one, make sure to check it out. Of course, in the 12 inch it looks a lot much uh, better and brighter. Next one is called the Wild Ducks Cluster. It's one of my favorite objects of all time. For one simple reason, that it's made of nearby stars. You can use quite a lot of magnification without uh, losing the brightness of the stars. Even with the 8 inch, it's like really, really interesting like a pack of small diamonds, very bright, very shiny, even with places of light pollution, like right now in the middle of a 500,000 uh, population city, near, near the edge of the city, and still I can see most of these objects uh, without any problem whatsoever. This one is about 28 light years across, and it's about 6,000 light years away. As you can see, obviously, the best objects are also the nearest to us because when they are nearby, they are big to our eyes and you can see them really, really well. The great thing about, this, the, the, great thing about the Wild Ducks cluster, again, you can very easily see them even with some binoculars, so make sure to check it out if you just have these and you don't have a telescope yet. And even if you have a telescope, I mean, you can always go to the balcony, have a quick look and enjoy the view. Next one is called the Ring Nebula, or also M57. It's a really interesting object because it's just one light year across. It's actually pretty far, 2300 light years away from Earth, but because it's small, you will need quite some magnification to see it clearly. The good news here is it's very, very bright, so it takes a lot of magnification easily. Looking at these uh, photos from the book, that's exactly how you will see it. It's one of the very few objects that you can actually see color. A little bit blue, a little bit red, it's really, really magnificent. Of course, in the 12 inch it looks absolutely amazing and it takes magnification very well. It's about 6,000 to 8,000 years old. I like looking at this one because it's exactly one light year across, so it's interesting to think how light will take one year to traverse this small patch, very small patch in the sky. This gives you an idea of how big the universe is and how slow actually light is. Albireo. Albireo is a very interesting one. You can use, again easily see it with a pair of binoculars. It's two stars, different colors takes magnification really well, really interesting, it's the most amazing thing, like two diamonds in the sky with different colors, definitely check it out, again, easy to see on the map, very, very easy to find. So we've covered some of the best objects for the spring and summer, go out there, have a look, obviously there are hundreds of objects, but these are one of my favorite ones. Make sure to stay in touch, subscribe, like, as I said, some of my next videos I'll be making on how to actually find these objects easily through star hopping or manually finding them. And six months later, I'll make another video on objects that you can enjoy during winter and uh, spring.
spring. Over and out, have a great day. Talk to you in one of my next videos. I'm actually preparing a video on how to shoot best photos with cell phone, having some adapters on the way. In one of my next videos, I'm actually making a review of some for, of the best cell phone adapters. The guys at Move Should Move sent me a free sample, give me a freedom to review it and compare it to my existing Celestron one, so you might want to check that out. It will be a really interesting video. Over now, talk to you next time.